Do you know this feeling? You built yourself a vehicle in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but darn it, you can only move 5 meters forward because your battery is way too small and runs out too quickly? Well, you're in luck, because on this video I'll show you not only how and where to expand your battery, but also how to use it most efficiently and the fastest method to obtain all of them. At the beginning of the game you start with one battery and the maximum you can get is 16. Now you might wonder, hey Zelda Senpai, but there's only space for 8 batteries on Link's belt, right? Yep, that's absolutely correct. Every time you add a battery, one more will hang on Link's belt. But that's only until Link has 8 batteries on his belt. If you try to add a 9th one, you'll keep your 8 green batteries, but the first green one will turn blue. So first you'll have 8 green, then 8 blue batteries, making a total of 16 batteries. Of course, a blue battery lasts longer, otherwise it wouldn't be an upgrade. Now let's talk about how to expand your battery. It's quite simple, you need to collect Zonite. Zonite is an ore found in the depths of Hyrule. It makes sense, right? After all, the depths is one of the biggest innovations in Zelda TOTK. Once you collect enough Zonite, you can exchange it at a forge of your choice for Zonite energy crystals. You can find such a forge, for example, at the abandoned central mine. At these forges, you can trade either 3 Zonite for 1 Zonite energy crystal or 3 large Zonite for 1 large Zonite energy crystal. Think of Zonite as sort of a currency alongside rupees. By the way, 1 large Zonite energy crystal is worth as much as 20 normal energy crystals, so it doesn't really matter which one you buy. And these crystals are the key to getting more batteries. Just take them and go to a battery station. The simplest battery station that every one of us can reach in 5 seconds, since we've all unlocked it, is located on the abandoned sky island next to the Nachio Yaha shrine, the shrine of recall. Just teleport there and talk to this construct here, as it will take your energy crystals and give you batteries in return. For every 100 zonite energy crystals, or for every 5 large zonite energy crystals, you'll get one third of a battery. Yes, you heard that right, for every 100 zonite energy crystals, you'll get one third of a battery. That's why each battery has these three compartments that light up independently, which you can see when using a Zonite device here. Each of your batteries is divided into three parts. Those are the thirds. If all this is too complicated, don't worry, it's also a bit confusing for me. Just remember, the more Zonite you have, the better it is. If you want to have all 16 batteries, you'll need 4500 Zonite energy crystals or 225 large Zonite energy crystals. In simple terms, you'll have to found 13.5 grand of Zonite or 675 large Zonite. A full battery requires 900 Zonite or 45 large Zonite. But wait, before you start getting as upset as I did when I found this out, listen to me. First, you don't need all the batteries by any means to enjoy the game and access all the rewards and quests. Far, far fewer will be sufficient. And second, farming Zonite is much faster than you think. So don't worry, I'll now show you the absolute best methods for it. If you're thinking, okay Zelda Senpai, I don't really want to do that, here's a tip for you. You can use Zonai energy spheres, careful, these are different from Zonai energy crystals, to refill your battery without having to get new batteries. Simply use your vehicle, go into the inventory and activate the energy spheres. This will replenish a portion of your battery. Even better, use a large Zonai energy sphere. They not only completely refill your battery, no matter how big it is, but they also give you this blinking bar around your battery indicator. As long as this bar is there, you won't consume any energy, no matter how large your construct is. This is particularly particularly useful for the early stages of the game. But caution, pay attention here. You need these energy spheres, which you obtain by defeating Zonai constructs, to get capsules from the capsule vending machines, so don't use too many of them. But that actually doesn't really matter. On this channel we don't need to compromise, because I'll now show you the easiest methods to get a lot of Zonite as quickly as possible. And let's be honest, we all want all the batteries. So we've learned that to get more batteries, we need to collect as much Zonite as possible. If you want to get a lot of Zonite as quickly as possible, follow this guide. First, go to the Great Plateau on the map and jump into the hole in the northeast of the plateau, making sure you land without taking fall damage. Next to you, you'll see a glowing root. Activate it, because by doing so, you light up the entire surrounding and reveal a section of the underground map. In other words, the routes are the same to the underground what towers are to the surface. From this route, not far to the southwest, you'll see a building with lights. That's the abandoned central mine where we want to go now. On the way there you may see shadow statues. Don't worry, they are not enemies but statues holding weapons that are free from the gloom. So if you don't have good weapons yet, feel free to take them, they are quite reliable. If it's too dark in some places, throw bright bloom seeds by pressing R and they'll light up the way for you. Once we arrive at the central mine, simply activate the screen switch and you'll receive auto build. 
With this ability you can save your own constructions and later, in case you have the necessary Zonai components, automatically rebuild them anytime and anywhere. This is extremely convenient and saves us a lot of time. By the way, that's why we jumped into the hole on the plateau, as it's right next to the central mine. After that you'll have to face an extremely easy boss fight, which is genuinely straightforward. If you manage to defeat this boss, you'll already receive 100 Zona energy crystals, enough to expand your battery once. As a result, a mine construct nearby will open up a shop where you can buy energy crystals and large energy crystals. By the way, this is the shop I always recommend going to, because there are no enemies, it offers both types of energy crystals and with a teleportation point on the map you can reach it instantly. This will be our base for the underground and from here we can do everything possible to quickly obtain Zonite, right Zelda Senpai? Absolutely right, from here on we have all options in the world. However, before you choose your favorite method and try to get all the batteries in this game, a short but very helpful tip. No matter which Zonite farming method you choose, try to activate as many routes as possible during your journey. This way you will always have a teleportation point everywhere and always know your location. In total there are 120 routes and here's the cool thing, there are 120 shrines on the surface. Note that I'm not counting the ones on the sky islands. Do you recognize it? Underneath each shrine on the surface, there's a route in the depths. So if you don't know where the next route is, just look at your map to find shrines on the surface and then precisely locate that spot in the depths or vice versa. Now finding the route should no longer be a problem and nothing stands in the way of completing your underground map. Alright, but how do we get Zonite now? First you can defeat mini bosses and I understand that some of you might think, uh, hey Zelda Senpai, I don't think I can do it because my equipment is still quite poor, etc. No worries at all, let me dispel your fear right away because mini bosses are not difficult at all and they give tremendous rewards. They are fed frogs, hynaxes, stalnoxes, stone tellers, battle tellers, constructs and well I admit lynels. They are not that difficult but not entirely easy either. For defeating each mini boss you receive 20 zona energy crystals. Yes you heard that right, you don't get zonite, you get the already converted expensive energy crystals. For every 5 mini bosses you defeat you'll get another new battery expansion and defeating such a mini boss takes about 1 to 2 minutes and the more you do it the faster you'll become. And if that hasn't convinced you yet let me tell you that in addition to the 20 crystals you'll also get zonite and valuable and powerful items and materials. So yes I promise it's really worth it. For the fat froxes you have to shoot them in the eye and hammer the stones on their back. For stone tellers you also need to attack the ore and for high nexus you need to shoot them in the eye to paralyze them or just attack them normally. For stall noxes you also need to shoot them in the eye and once it falls out quickly hit it before they pick it up again. Do you recognize it? It's always the same attack patterns and big enemies trying to scare us. But we know their weaknesses and know for sure that they all show, they aren't hard to beat. Once you've exterminated the mini bosses they will only respawn after the next blood moon which occurs approximately every 2 hours and 48 minutes. So it's a good idea to mark all the locations on the map where you found a mini boss so you can come back later to get those awesome glowing energy crystals and finally obtain more batteries. I recommend using a skull symbol since it represents enemies for me but you can use whatever you prefer. There are 40 frogs, 20 constructs, a total of 28 hynoxes, 32 stone tellers and 19 lynels. Additionally there are eager hideouts. Each hideout has a treasure room with red lamps at the entrance. To get in you'll need to defeat the eager soldier glowing in red. In this room you'll find 20 zona energy crystals in one of those two chests. However unlike the mini bosses you will only receive the crystals each first time you visit a hideout. If if you're wondering how to reach elevated places like this one, the answer is with a flying device. Since I know that not every one of you can build a flying device or knows how it works, I've taken the time to find the most effective and quickest to build flying vehicle in all of Tears of the Kingdom for you. All you need for it are two fans and a steering stick and that's it. I know it sounds strange but trust me friends this thing is literally the best vehicle in the entire game. If you don't have these components it's not a problem at all, just go back to the plateau and jump into the hole again. Once you're down where we've been before you'll find a workshop right there. There you'll find everything you need. Use such a rod and place it upright on the ground. Now take a steering stick and place it upside down on the rod. Caution, just drop it with B and don't attach it with A because we don't need the rod itself. Then take a fan and position it at a 45 degree angle towards you and attach it centrally to the steering stick with A. 
Careful, it must be attached centrally, otherwise it will yeah, quite literally fly like a sausage with wings. Now simply attach another fan as a rear wheel so to speak upright and the vehicle is ready. You might wonder why it's the best vehicle. Well, because it's easy to control, quite fast, it can fly upwards, downwards, left, right, so very maneuverable for case and it has few parts so it's very small and can fit through anywhere. To avoid having to rebuild it every time, save it in auto build and then you can have it rebuilt for you, provided you have the necessary zonite components. If you don't have them, no problem either, just pay 9 zonite and it will also appear automatically. Now throw bright bloom seed on the front fan as the headlight and the Ferrari is complete. But be cautious, throwing the bright bloom seat with R on the front fan activates the bike automatically. After throwing the bright bloom seat, hit the fan with a weapon to prevent it from flying away. Now you can stand on it and zoom through the caves. But keep in mind that you should really use a bright bloom seat for the headlight. The zona light doesn't work because it weighs too much and throws off the balance of our vehicle causing it to be unusable. In other words our Ferrari would have a complete engine breakdown and be useless. If your battery runs out just land and then continue flying. Another effective method is to search for large zonite deposits guarded by enemies. Here you can get either regular or large zonite. If you don't want to defeat the enemies simply put on Majora's mask and the monsters won't attack you. But honestly I can only recommend defeating them because they drop zonite and are not very tough opponents. The ore deposits also respawn just like the mini bosses after every blood moon. So mark the ore deposits on the map as well with a suitable symbol. Here's another small but tremendous helpful extra tip. Take a picture of a zonite ore once and then when you select it in the Hyrule Compendium you'll always be able to locate it. When you're near zonite and walk in the right direction the sensor at the bottom right will start to react. By the way you'll also encounter slightly stronger bosses on such platforms if you're far enough in the main story. For each boss you defeat the first time a chest spawns giving you 100 zona energy crystals which is a complete battery expansion. As you can see, as I promised, farming batteries can be much faster than initially thought. And yes, I completely understand you if you say, Zelda Senpai, the bosses are a bit too much for me, I'd rather peacefully farm Zonite, because I feel the same way. But hold on, this is important, so pay attention. Even if the bosses aren't for you, still go to those locations because often there are extremely large zonite deposits nearby that we really want to have. But be careful, before you break them save your game at this point because if you get very few or no large zonite from these deposits you can simply reload the save file and break the deposits again. Keep doing this until you get many large zonite because as we remember large zonite is more valuable than its regular kind. This can theoretically be done with each deposit individually but to be honest it's not worth. It. I only recommend doing this at the monster camps or the ore deposits near bosses. The last option you have to farm energy crystals is the floating arena located just below the Colosseum. Inside the floating arena you must fight against 5 lions in a row and each of them drops 20 zonai energy crystals. So a total of 100 which means a complete battery expansion. Now I don't expect you to defeat 5 lions in a row by any means, especially since they get progressively stronger. To make sure everyone can achieve this as I aim for on this channel I've once again found the best tricks in the game for you. You can throw a puff room at the Lionels by pressing R. This causes the Lionel to act just as foolish and disorientated as I was when I went alone to England with my friends. Ugh. Another tip is to shoot the Lionel in the face which paralyzes it and allows you to climb on its back. If it's too hard for you to hit its face press ZR and then attach an eye to your arrow using D-pad up. This will ensure that the arrow automatically lands a headshot. By the way it doesn't matter which weapon you choose, the weapon won't lose any durability when you sit on its back and hit him. The last Lionel wears armor. To defeat it you need to use a weapon that can break stones and because of that also the Lionel's armor. After that it behaves just like a regular Lionel. Oh and let me tell you something, besides the energy crystals the Lionels also drop extremely powerful weapons and materials so defeating the floating arena is even more rewarding. For all 5 Lionels you should receive at least 1200 rupees each time if you sell their horns and other parts. Since it's bothersome to have to go there every time I strongly recommend placing a teleportation medallion right right in front of the arena entrance. Ok, 139 mini bosses each giving 20 energy crystals, that's a total of 2780 energy crystals. Add to that the ore deposits and the smaller enemies and you can do this every blood moon. So theoretically if you want enough fast enough you can get 32 battery expansions, that's over 10 full batteries, almost 11. And I mean there are only 16 in total of which you already have at least one. So as you can see it doesn't take nearly as long as you might think to farm 
some 13,500 zolonite. But wait friends, that's not all. Now let me quickly share some extremely important facts about the battery that you should definitely hear. First, if you have bought all the crystals from the shop and want more, just go to a stable, a town or lookout landing and sleep there. And when you wake up, the shelves should be fully restocked. Second, if you have bought all 16 batteries or all 16 batteries are blue, you can now exchange your energy crystals for zonai components of your choice at the exact locations where you extended your batteries. However, and this is the thing, you can only get the zonai components that you have already found as capsules and vending machines. Third, you can also attach an extremely rare large battery to your vehicle and fly for about, depending on how many components your vehicle has, about 2 minutes. You can find these batteries in a few chests, such as the ones in shrines. However, since they only last for one use, they are usually not very practical. But here's the thing, if you really want to know everything about Tears of the Kingdom and have a perfect save file, it's not enough to just have all the 16 batteries, at all. In Tears of the Kingdom you have to buy so many cool things like armor to be able to experience all this game has to offer. And believe me, the worst feeling is seeing an awesome strong armor in a new town and not being able to afford it. And that's why you should definitely watch this video here right now as it shows you the fastest and most effective methods in all of Tears of the Kingdom to obtain rupees. If you missed this, you always say poor. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.